Okay. Okay, so in three, oh, wait, two. Hold on a second. No, stop. I lost it. Hold on. Hold on. Don't go yet. Uh, oh, someone else. Go. Yeah, I'm sorry. We we're already live. By apology. So. Um, oh, that's okay. Um, no, no, just, no worries. As soon as you find your script, script. we'll be good. <laughs> that's all. Yep. Thought I had it up, but I didn't. Good afternoon. I now call to order the May 31st, 2023 meeting of the Budget Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. To conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Regino if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Regino, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. And let me know if I'm saying your name correctly. You, you are saying it correctly. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Dominowski? Here. Mr. McMillian? Here. Ms. Hen? Here. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Here. Thank you. Ms. Regina, please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Certainly. Mr. Christopher Hartlove? Here. Mr. Witt Tantliff? Present. Is there any additional staff participating that were not mentioned? If so, please state your name. Okay. Thank you. Moving You're on, our, our first um, agenda, Mr. Hartlove, will you please provide an overview of contract spending authority? Sure. Um, Good after or good evening, everyone. Um, the uh, hopefully everyone can see the screen, the budget committee contract spending authority screen. Um, so I'll move forward. I just want to thank uh, Melanie Webster in purchasing. She uh, helped quite a bit on this, as did Mr. Tantliff um, on putting this together. So um, and the budget staff and the purchasing staff. So with that, uh, we'll talk about contract spending authority. Um, first of all, just real quickly talk about what purchase the purchasing office, uh, their role is. And I, when I spoke with uh, uh, Ms. Webster, she basically said they have five rights that they look at. Um, she said sometimes this changes, sometimes there's seven rights, but she's looking, she said they're looking for the right product the right quality, the right price, the right place, and the right time. So where does contract spending authority fit into this? Well, that's um, looking for the right price. So how contract spending authority fits into what the purchasing office does is it uh, represents the uh, maximum amount we can spend on an approved contract. That's uh, that's what it, it represents. It doesn't necessarily mean we have we will have the money to do it, but we it, it, it that is the most we can spend on that particular approved contract. Um, contract spending authority also allows us to compare and select vendors. We we look at um, providing a similar product and we look at the price, and that's how we it. It comes into the making of a decision as to what products we move forward to the board for approval and which ones we do not. Um, and then uh, lastly, contract spending authority can span multiple fiscal years, uh, multiple financial codes and fund sources, uh, multiple purchase orders and multiple vendors. So when you're looking at the contract spending authority, um, it can actually occur. The actual spending can occur over um, multiple funds and multiple fund sources. So uh, the committee asked for a specific example, so we tried to have an example that is meaty enough, but also something we can present 
in a present in a presentation that simplified. So hopefully everybody can see this example. And we looked at uh, and it's an example. The, the numbers are as of a few days ago. Actually, I say here 531, but we actually pulled them a couple of days ago. Um, so if you, at the beginning of this, at the very top, we're looking at uh, textbooks for the for the system, and in for this for this purposes of this discussion, we're also including digital subscriptions in that as well. So if you if you uh, if you look at the current budget in the current fiscal fiscal year 23, the budget is um, between 8.5 and 8.6 million dollars for textbooks. We've since we're almost through the fiscal year, we've spent a, a great deal of that budget, uh, but we're within budget, so that's a good thing. Um, we've spent approximately 8.2 million dollars, so that's 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 kind of. Um, the budget, the budget in, in a way is simple. It's one number uh, for this and the expenditures add up and they come from multiple places. So we show that just to kind of say what what's going on with the budget. Where contract spending authority comes in is. In this particular uh, example, when we're procuring um, textbooks, we're for the most part using contracts that were previously bid and brought forward. So this lists all the contracts that had been utilized um, for procuring textbooks. Now these contracts could be uh, utilized for uh, for procuring other items as well, but they're in this case they're being used for procuring textbooks. And the way you read this is these are all actual numbers um, that that the uh, buildings and contracts committee would uh, review and then they would be taken to the board for uh, approval. Uh, these have all been done in um, in previous years, but they're still those contracts are still active because they're multi year contracts. So for instance, the first contract that we're showing here, ARA-203-22, has a contract spending authority of $2,235,000. And if you go back and pull that contract, which I, I gave you those, um, the, the cover sheets for those contracts, so you, that was in the board, doc, uh, board docs as well. I apologize for the late uh, posting of that, but there, there are cover sheets for all of these contracts, so you can kind of look at them. Um, but in the current fiscal year, we've only spent, for textbooks, we've only spent nineteen thousand one hundred and three dollars using this this contract. Um, so, uh, so the you can kind of go through each one of these, and there's a spending authority, and then there's the number of expenditures we've actually uh, uh, incurred um, on that contract. And just this is not necessarily critical, but just like in this this particular contract, JMI 612-18, it actually has multiple vendors. Uh, and in this case, in the in this year, um, there's contract spending authority of 13 million. We've spent $295,303 and we've utilized, uh, we've spent money through Follett, Houghton Mifflin, McGraw Hill, the book rack, all kind of, they were all separate uh, expenditures in those for those vendors. But if you look down at the bottom, I think it's kind of the telling part of this is that spending authority on these particular contracts adds up to almost $85 million. But as you as you can see, our budget is nowhere near that and uh, we've spent um, nowhere nowhere near that. Um, and that's because spending authority, you know, it, it, it we'll, we'll talk about some of the details, but it's it's kind of it's different and it's got a different purpose from budget. So um, I don't know if there are any while I'm on this slide, any uh, questions? We can certainly come back to it as well, but I'll stop here for a minute. I've got some more information, but I figure uh, there's a lot of meat here. Yes, I think this hand had a question. Yes, thank you, Mr. Manowski, and good afternoon, Mr. Hartlove. Good afternoon. Um, to clarify for my fellow committee members and also to the public who may be listening, um, because this is qualified under the heading the right price, I just want to be clear that the contract spend authority does not pertain to the pricing for a particular product or service. Most of our contracts are, we're talking about a blanket 
spend authority for multiple products or multiple services and that purchasing does, is not looking at necessarily the pricing of a particular product or service but rather we're talking about i i frequently use the term a line of credit almost if you will that can be applied toward multiple purchases under that contract spend authority is is that an accurate statement or can you add clarity to that I, I think so, and what I would add to it is, is you know, when we when we uh, bid things out, um, we do we we do look at at price. That's an important part um, of the of the equation, but it has to hit those other rights. You know, it has to be you know the right quality and and all the items that we referred to before. So price, we're not necessarily picking the lowest price. And you were also exactly correct. These, this is just an authority. We haven't spent this dollar amount. It's just saying with this particular contract, the items that are that um, come under this contract can be uh, this contract can be used to procure those, and the to and the total can go up to the total spending authority. It doesn't necessarily mean that for every one of those items that is the very best price, because it may be that um, you know if we're looking at a a, a a bucket of goods. It could be that, uh, like, if you're looking at supplies, for instance, you know, you, you you we buy many of our supplies from WB Mason. WB Mason, overall, their prices are very good, but there may be not the the least expensive one, a particular item. But we think the basket of goods they tend to be have the best price. That's why we've gone with them. Um, um, so. So you are correct. It's not specific. It's these are not. That's not one item. That's multiple items over multiple years, and uh, price is just one part of it. And it's not the full deciding factor. So hopefully that helps a little bit. It it does. And where I'd like to see, and we don't have to get into this um, in the interest of time, but I'd like greater clarity um, provided to the committee and board around how we determine whether we're getting a good deal right in these basket of products especially when we have a basket of products and services how do we evaluate vendors to determine who are we going to do business with for that let's say their their products seem like a good value but maybe their services are less of a value or or vice versa how what does that evaluation process look like and how do we determine which vendors we're we're going to do business with i'd like greater insight into that myself because when we receive a contract award recommendation it's we're we're almost flying blind right uh, around that i'd like to see greater detail um in that especially with these like you said mixed bag of of recommendations we receive frequently right. recommendations for on-call services that can include a lot of different services from a lot of different vendors. And if if we're saying we're looking at price, great, but how how are we doing that? And and I'm not asking you to speak speak to right. this. Um, right. Now, but but I would like greater detail uh, on that. Yep, we can definitely go there, and we probably you know maybe want to bring that into a, a buildings and contracts meeting. Um, maybe a better place for that, but I think it's a. It doesn't mean it's not a valid point. It's a very good point, um, and I, you know, I think this type of discussion is good because we do have uh, a, a largely newer board, you know. So it's it. I think you know it's nice to kind of under have an understanding of what's going into these things that you're approving. It's, and I understand you know the trepidation of approving things and not fully understanding it and that's and that's a valid point so we get it and we'll try to do our we'll try to do our best to get that to sure. get that out especially to the the newer members I, I think the oversight goes to to both committees and yes the lines are gray here and and yes, right. it's, it's absolutely part of the building and contracts discussion but I'll I'll turn it over to my my committee members thank you for indulging me and in that information Thank you. Uh, I see there's other questions. I just have a follow up that sure, goes sure. with this end. So then I'll get to Rod and I mean, Mr. McMillan. Sure. Um, so when you get these contract bids, is that something that's included in, you know, what can we see what what the bids are 
can, or can we start including that so that we know that we we are getting like we're comparing apples to apples as far as like when you go get a contract for um whatever curriculum and then there's we, it always says like five bidders but we don't know who those bidders are what they offered at what price and as opposed to everyone else is that something that we could start including um that is that was that you had i, I think you made a similar uh yes um, yes and i actually i have on my list of things to do i'm going to try to do it tomorrow but is to um have a discussion with Ms. Harvey and start to since it's since it's the document that goes through the buildings and contracts, I figure uh, we should start the discussion there. But I'm gonna I'm gonna have that discussion with her and see if she wants to bring it to the this meeting that's coming upcoming, and we can discuss what if there's any additional data we should be uh, including. What would be helpful? You know, you're trying to balance off. Um, helpful versus overwhelming, you know, trying to, you know, not give too much information where you get bogged down, um, but at the same time giving you enough information so you can make an informed decision. So I want to have that conversation um, and I and it's already on our on our radar from the last board meeting. Thank you. Mr. McDonough, you have a question? Yeah, two things. Next. Yeah, two things. Uh, I think it's a great idea and and Ms. Dominowski initiated it, and Dr. Williams said that you know to revisit the template and 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 come up with something that's more user friendly for us. I think that's a great idea because I'm still, even though I've been on this committee for four four years and months, that that, that form still throws me some. Uh, secondly, you said that there were in some cases there's five rights in other cases there's seven rights that's the kind of thing that's going to stimulate a question in me <laughs> what's the other two rights and, you know, and I, why do we pick and choose when we apply those rights thank you th that is that is a good question and she and and, and uh ms webster said that and i didn't write down what the other two rights are so i um so i apologize i don't know what they are but i can certainly go back to that that slide and we don't pick and choose i think this was just meant to be kind of like a a, a context of what why we look at, at contract spending authority and and it it it's very much towards you know without going into a lot of details as Ms. Hen said earlier I think you know this is kind of a similar uh, question you know we're trying to satisfy all of these things the right product the right quality the right price the right place the right time sometimes something is one of these is more important than the others if if especially if 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 products are equal in quality and equal in a lot of ways then you would think that and 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 we they're all offering a comparable quantity then you would think that a price would be the deciding factor which it, it probably would be in that case uh, now if a product doesn't meet the minimum quality then even if the price is the best price uh, we're not going to be looking at that. So it's a balance of it's it's a balance of all of these things. Um, and, you know, so so but we are looking at all of them. It's just sometimes uh, uh, obviously we need to at least hit a certain quality uh, of what a product needs to provide. Um, and, but we also have budgetary concerns that we have to make sure we have the dollar. So it's it's a balancing act. Thank you. And and I think uh, you, what you're saying about the uh, uh, the form, we are we're going to have start having that discussion. Um, I'll move forward then, and then we can always come I think back. Mr. Bo Ms. Booker Dyer had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Hartgrove. Hartlove, sorry. Um, Hi. So I I have a couple of questions. So when I think about the budget, um, the budget. <laughs> Looking at the budget in isolation of the 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 full system to me doesn't tell the full picture. So when I see a budget, I want to know yes how much we we spent on it, but then what is the effectiveness? How do we know that it's working? How many years have we spent this amount of money on the product, and and is it giving us the what it said it would give us? Um, so what is that return on investment? And then where does it fall under the strategic plan? So I, I almost envision this even being presented in a different way 
so that people can see the full scope. So if it is a textbook or digital resources, then I want to know that we've spent, you know, $1.4 million on it. We have X number of students accessing this daily, and we're seeing that, you know, the students who are accessing it, we're seeing that they are, you know, have increases in their English language arts or some. So the budget, I feel like it's it's the story of how the money is being spent and are we seeing that return on it? And then that'll help the board make better informed decisions on whether or not we approve contracts to continue or um, or not. Because sometimes I feel like we, we're, we're seeing the numbers, but the numbers represent something and we should be getting something from these numbers. And I feel like I'm missing that part of the story. Right. I think it's a very good po point. And and I, when I get to the the of the slide, the, the few slides that are left, um, I think I address some of that. It, what I was trying to do, what we were trying to do with this, is that you know the the question came up about I uh, wanting to understand more about contract spending authority, and and so contract spending authority, and we'll talk about this in a moment, but it really is more tied to procurement than it is to budget. It's not real, you know, it it there's there's budgetary implications, but you know, that's why, but I'm presenting it this way just so you can see um there there is a connection. So there we're showing the connection, but let me move forward and if you still have other questions, then we can we can go. Am I cutting anybody else off or we I think Ms. Hen had a follow-up, but I, I, I also wanted to add, I think um that's where the confusion I lies in that the contract authority as opposed to what the contract actually is. So when you we have. It's almost like I'd rather know what the contract is than how much we are able to spend on it. Does that make sense? Like I it's it, it, right. it, 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 it's. Um, well, I think I can't think. Yeah, go. But yes, Ms. Hen, if you want to follow up or if you want, want Mr. Hall to be able to finish and then we'll ask questions at the end. I have a quick follow up and okay. if we can sure. come back to it or if you're sure. going to for it, Mr. Hartlove, that's fine. It, it's in the same vein though, and it's tying the spend authority and the amount that's requested to the budget years because what what throws me is the rationale behind the amount requested when it's covering a multi-year project. Because what I'm trying to understand is what within each budget year what are the strategic objectives that we are funding and what resources are needed to meet those objectives in e in any given budget year and understanding how that aligns with the contract spend authority so it would be more helpful to know okay what's what is being requested for what period of time what is the you know, if it's a five year project, OK, this is the five year plan and then what I would expect to see the remainder of that authority used for the duration of the project in those following budget years. And and we're not seeing that that complete puzzle or that alignment of this, the contract spend authority to those five budget years in terms of that overall that project. And I've requested this, but not in <laughs> with this language wrapped around it. So I think that's what I'm hearing others asking for to see how the spending authority we're approving ties to our strategic plan and objectives, how we can measure that, um, the accountability, what are the results of, of that investment, and then make those decisions on a year to year basis. Because we, we see the ship kind of going in a number of different directions and shifting. And as we receive requests for contract approvals, it's like, OK, we're we're moving these different directions, but what were the results of the previous investments and how are we holding ourselves accountable um, for those results that Ms. Booker Dwyer was mentioning? Yeah, and, and measure that in one place and I guess right. that in one place. And these are all good points. I, I think the point that I and maybe I'll just move through at least get the slides through and then maybe we can continue to discuss the the thing I think that I the point that I want to make is that contract spending authority really is not a budgetary tool. It's it's really make we have a procurement process, which is you know it's a separate and we're not I'm not saying that that's perfect or the budget process is perfect, but um, I think this is the budget committee. 
and I hear a lot of concerns about how we're spending our money results, and I think that those are very good, and that's something we should talk about with the budget process. The, the buildings and contracts in the, in the procurement process is really set to once we decide we want to do something, like we know we have to teach students um, English language arts. We know we need to do that. Then we, we, we know we need a curriculum. So we go out and we procure that curriculum. The decision to um, the budgetary decision is is one thing. We know we need a certain amount of dollars to ha to buy textbooks for a new curriculum. The what we procure has to go through a procurement process, and that's it's so it's they're related in that they're all our dollars, but um, it, the contract spending authority is not. It really is not tied to the budget. It's really tied to the procurement and and allowing us to compare prices of various things that we can buy. I mean, like a, a simple example would be if we're buying a vehicle and we need we need to go out and buy a truck. We know that there's the Chevy, if just a basic pickup truck. We know there's the Chevy Silverado and the Ford F-150. They both would probably meet our needs, and there are probably other Dodge Ram. There'd be other ones out there, but we would then, once we once we decided we needed a a, a a truck a truck through the budget process, that would be, you know, we would put money aside for a truck. And then the question is, is what kind of you know what truck are we going to buy? And we would be looking at the quality of the trucks and the price of the trucks and all the, those kind of good things, and we would probably uh, buy the truck uh, our process would probably lead us to the truck that was at that point in time the least expensive for a comparable model um, the budget process would cover we're going to buy a truck and it would estimate we would put in and i don't know what a truck costs today but we would put in fifty thousand dollars to say we're going to procure a truck and then once we have that budgetary authority then we would go out and buy the truck and the truck could be multiple different types of truck. I mean, it could be multiple different uh, uh, brands. We would pick the one that we felt at that point in time met our um, met our needs best, and that would be so we'd have a budget for the truck, but then we'd have uh, the actual cost of the truck. So, um, but on this on this particular slide here, just kind of comparing and contrasting budget appropriation versus contract spending authority. Budget appropriation is our, you know, it's our overall amount, but it's also specific to uh, things like textbooks, divisions, departments. It's specific uh, to those areas. Um, contract spending authority is even more specific. It's it's specific to a contract. Um, budget is typically we talk about our budget. We talk about one, you know, we get one appropriation year at a time. We may be planning for multiple years, but we have. Uh, one budget we uh, 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 um, approve at a time, or the board approves at a time. Contract spending authority is, mul is multiple years. Um, one follow up to that, Mr. Hartlove. Sure. Once the board approves the budget, the system spends as it desires um, outside of the board's purview, except for contract spending authority. So really, our our governance or our approval mechanisms are limited to our contract approvals which is where we come in to provide oversight through the contract approval right. process, which is where we're linking the two. Yes. I see what you're saying in that there, there's, there's not a direct alignment, but in terms of our governance, it is because contract spending, contract approvals are the only means currently that the board has of providing oversight and ensuring that our budget priorities are implemented as we have approved right essentially and, and even and, though it's and, not direct control it's the only control we have at our disposal and and i and i understand it it's, both are, are both are incredibly important um roles um but what i would you know the the thing with with a contract is when um when you when the board approves or decides not to approve a contract if 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 the board approves a contract, that just gives um, us the option. Doesn't mean we're going to go out and spend on that, but it gives us the option um, by 
not approving a contract, all that means is it doesn't cut our budget. It, it, it doesn't necessarily save any money because that money is still available to be used on other contracts. So like curriculum, for instance, if we if 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 a curriculum minimum comes up and it's not approved, those dollars are available and will probably be used since we don't have the new curriculum, they'll probably be used on the old curriculum. Um, so it's not the spending is still going to happen. It's just going to happen on different things than what it would have. Um, so, uh, but I, I I understand the points are all valid. They're all valid points. It's just it's just um, you know there we have we really have to have a budget. Obviously, budget is very very important process. But we also have to then once we decide what we're going to do we're you know because it's taxpayer dollars we have to procure things in a way that is fair to anybody who's in that business um but also you know taxpayers is and i'm telling you guys know this more than i do because you've run for office but you know the folks want us to know like in my truck example if we could get a chevy silverado for forty five thousand and a ford f-150 for forty nine thousand they're going to want us to buy this Chevy Silverado because they're going to say, why are you spending $40,000 that you don't have to spend to get the same thing? So that's why we have the procurement aspect of things, but we also have, you know, the budget is more the plan of what you're going to do. Um, so uh, wait, the only thing uh, I came up second. with. Mr. Hartlow, Mr. Sure. McMillian had questions and Ms. Sure. Book Driver had several questions. So could you mind pausing for a minute? No, Sorry. no problem. <laughs> this is the last slide, actually. So OK, go ahead, Mr. McMillian. Uh, uh, real quick, Mr. Hartlove, you brought up the truck. I <laughs> used to be a truck guy a couple <laughs> years ago. We paid something stupid for a work truck and, and you know, it came across. And, and I'm like, why are we spending this money on a work truck? You know, that ought to be a basic kind of truck. It's not somebody's personal vehicle they're going to pull a trailer with. I was just astounded at the price of, you know, one truck that we bought a couple of years ago. So I don't know how much we keep an eye on that stuff or whether somebody's actually, you know, like when you said the $4,000, I don't know if in this case, it, it certainly didn't appear that it occurred to me. Thank you. Well, no, I think that that's a valid. See, the other question you're asking, and this is something you you I think you can only go so far with governance because I think the other what we're what I was saying is is if there were two trucks that were spec down exactly the same, we should be buying the one that's less expensive. Now, how we spec out a particular truck, um, you know, what kind of add-ons we put on there, that's really a management decision if they have if that manager has the budget to buy a truck that has options on it and we have an internal oversight but you know not everyone is qualified to be able to say what you know do you need the best plow or do you need the mid-range plow you know those types of things are become more difficult to say uh, it's a judgment call do we need you know do we need this or do we need that do we need the tow package? You know, that's the type of thing that it becomes more dicey um, to say. But if we're going to buy one with a tow package, we better be buying. We better be looking at multiple uh, trucks, and we better be buying the one that it provides a comparable tow package for the best price. Mr. Hartlop, my comeback to that is there was a lot of bells and whistles on this, and when you talk about management and what they requested or required in that truck, I think sometimes the fact that it's not their money they're spending. You know, they go out for the maximum on something on a work truck. You know, that's a utility truck that to me should be bare bones kind of truck. But that's me. Thank that's you. you. That's you. But you, I, I, I hear you 100 percent. And that's these processes are going to be harder to. To drill down to that level. Um, so but that's but I understand what you're saying. So I spoke a driver. Yes. I have several questions, um, and, and I think a lot of it just boils down to the transparency in the budgetary process and, and how the money is being spent, the, the transparency of it all. And so, and so what I'm wondering is, what are the plans? Because I see, you know, in the in slide four, you know, there's that spreadsheet with the contract spend authority, the expenditures. And I'm just wondering, how can we begin to make this 
these budget items more transparent. And so that when we come to these meetings, it's not all these questions that are needed or all the background information that are needed just so that the board can understand what's happening. Because if we're having a hard time understanding this, then so is the public. And so so what is happening in the, the office to to try to get at that more, to try to make all of this more transparent? Because I know that there's tools out there like Microsoft Power BI, for instance, easy just data tracker where you could put in information and you could map things in real time, not a heavy cost lift. So I think a lot of this just comes down to the way that it's communicated and and how people are receiving. And that's why we're getting, I think you're getting so many questions. So could you just speak to a little bit about what, what the plan is to make this budgetary process transparent, not just for board members, but for the Baltimore County community? Right. No, th and those are that's a good point. I think what I would say, my answer would be twofold. First of all, this presentation is to kind of differentiate the contract spending authority versus the budget. I think the contract spending authority, the buildings and contracts process is a critical process, but not so much for budget. Um, and I think the trying to tie it to budget, I think, is is going to be problematic because the, the the main focus is what we're procuring, how we're procuring it, not it's it's way down in the weeds of of like you're what you're talking about is big picture. You're, and that's the budget process. And actually we have one of our, the, I, I did add it to the agenda, just to start a discussion about the FY25 budget process. Um, we certainly would love to hear, you know, the feedback on the budget itself and things that you'd like to see. Um, that's, you know, um, um, certainly we want to improve the budget process however it can be improved but i would my first step would be is, is to make sure that we're separating these two out you know that that we're not looking at the the buildings and contracts is truly trying to make sure we're procuring things it's a procurement process not a budget process and it's it's just making sure that we're procuring things in an above board manner in a in a in a legal legally acceptable transparent manner um, but it's and it should be tied to the overall plan but it's way down deep in that overall plan it's you know um you know we're talking when we're looking at these numbers on the screen right now these are buying individual textbooks for students you know um, not this is not deciding uh, um how much we're going to put into uh textbooks replacement textbooks new textbooks new curriculum this is just Specifically, what are what are all the details of what we're buying? Um, I think you're looking more at a higher level um, budget uh, process, budget transparency, budget goals, and accountability discussion, and less of a uh, uh, the the specific contract. But um, that's so that's the purpose of this to, today is just to make that differentiation. Um, and we can talk about the budget. Certainly that next agenda, uh, agenda item, we can talk about it now. Any ideas that you have, we, we, we want to hear the concerns and then try to come up with ways to address those concerns as best possible. Well, I, I do think putting that on the, on a future agenda, one that's relatively uh, coming up relatively quickly, um, just about the whole budget transparency and how we can better communicate how much money we have, what's being spent, where are we in the spend down process, how do we know that things are um, effective? Who, you know, and even getting to, I mean, Ms. Hen, she was speaking to, you know, even just the rubrics that are used. To all of that needs to be made um, publicly available and presented in a way that's super clear and transparent for everyone. I mean, I love, I can say like Frederick County Public Schools, there was a presentation where they just put a dollar up and they cut that dollar up and it, they were able to show, you know, for every, in this dollar, every 10 cent is going here and, third, and it was really clear how parents were able to understand it um, and then you know within that 30 cent they broke it down even further and I just I, I would love to see Baltimore County get at a place where we can definitively say for this money that we're putting into the school district for you know from our taxes or from grants and the federal dollars beyond the pie chart line item you know we've spent x amount of dollars on these on this math on these math textbooks and math materials and this is what we've purchased 
and this is what we're seeing in yields for um, for our student growth. So we, I think we need to get to that level of the budget analysis so that um, people, they understand where every dollar is going. Sounds good. I hear your, hear your point. We'll, we will continue to have these discussions. Uh, well, just because you, you said this, Mr. Hartlove, mm -hmm. how is contract spending authority not part of the budget process? We're allowing you to spend a certain amount of money and yes, you may not spend it, and it's over the course of the contract, but you can spend it. So how is that not part of the budget process? Well, if you go back to, well, let no, me go, do, let, I'll do this one slide so I can make sure I check this off, and then I'll go back to the to the details. The, I, I, this is my attempt at trying to make myself understand it. Um, in order for us to, to procure things, we need to have adequate budget and we need to have contract spending authority. There are two different things. Budget is is the actual dollars to spend. Contract spending authority means that we've been approved to spend it on that on that item, and it's been gone through a good procurement process. So we can have all the contract spending authority in the world, but if we don't have the budget, we can't procure it. And we can have all the budget in the world, but if we haven't provided a contract that's been vetted properly, that's that, that shows that we've that we've gone through a procurement process. We also can't buy it. just you know, I it going back to the truck example. I can't say oh, I've got a budget for vehicles and just go to the local uh, uh, vehicle uh, auto auto uh, sales place and buy a truck. We can't do that. We have to go through a process to ensure um, that we're buying it um, in the most effective way possible. So that that's that. Getting back to your question about budget contract spending authority. It's the um, it, it goes back to what I was just saying, actually, just because you have contract spending authority, you also have to have the budget. So um, it, it, if you were to cancel one of these budgets, one of these contracts, it wouldn't mean that we would necessarily spend any less money. We would just not be able to spend the money on that particular item because that item has been it has not been approved by the board. So if if, if um, you know if the board says I don't we don't want to uh, we don't any of the build any of the the contracts that come forward. If you say eh, I don't feel good about that contract for whatever reason, and the the board as a whole says says they don't feel. Uh, uh, comfortable with that contract. What that means is, is that item we cannot, those items that are included in that contract, we cannot buy, but it hasn't reduced our budget at all. And, it, and, and so it means we have those do dollars to use for something else that we do have the authority to buy. So I'm not saying it's not important. I'm just saying it's not the budget. What I'm saying though, if, to go back to your truck example, we if we gave you the spending authority for that truck and you put all the bells and whistles on it to fill that to fill that contract authority, which is what you just said. You don't know like you might buy a, the, the basic truck might cost forty five thousand dollars, but we gave you a, a, a contract authority for eighty thousand. So you put all the bells and whistles on it. How do we know that's not happening? And that's where that's where the. Um, transparency needs to be and why we need what we need to know is happening because yes, we might say no to that contract and then you don't have that money to spend but and we can spend it on something else that might work or might not work but we don't we don't know and we're 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 we are um, approving contract authority spending for things and we don't actually know what it's being spent on because you could add bells and whistles that we don't know about yeah, and I, and I think you know there's, there, that's a that's a a good point. I and the only and I and I'm not disagreeing with anything that's being said. The only thing I'm saying is is that it's it's not necessarily budget, but you it, there is a sense of control. They're just saying that's taking an option away uh, for something that we would not be able to procure. Um, we still would have we still have to you know in the in the example of the truck, we have to have the budgetary authority. Not it, just because we bid out a fancy truck doesn't mean we can procure it unless we have the dollars to do it also. But I guess what I'm saying is because you bid it out at the contract authority to buy the bells and whistles, we're giving you the opportunity to do that without knowing that's what we're doing because we've given you the contract spending authority for it. Does that make sense? Do you understand what I'm yeah. saying? 
You, yeah, you, you, you basically. I understand that that allows us to do that. There's no doubt that would allow if we. So these, I, it, the contract yeah. buildings and contracts, approving contracts is a very important step. I'm not saying I'm not saying that at all. I, I agree with you that it's a very important step because that is that does show the de, at least some of the details of what we are procuring. Ms. Sen, did you have a follow up? I, I do, thank you. Um, so I share the concerns I've expressed by Ms. Domanowski um, and Ms. Booker Dwyer in that um, about transparency, accountability. Um, it, the budget is a plan. It's a plan that of how the system is going to use the resources that taxpayers, that the public has entrusted to it. And we don't expect everything to go exactly as planned. There are contingencies, which you know everyone expects and, and are reasonable, but following the truck analogy we've spoken to, um, if we budget 1 million for trucks and that's in the budget, and we give 10 million in contract spend authority and have 9 million savings in um, salaries due to vacancies, we could buy 10 million in trucks. And because we've approved 10 million in contract spend authority on that contract, that would be perfectly allowable. And that's a deviation to plan. Now it may be a bat that the board would have to approve um, budget allocation transfer, but that's how we do business currently. And and I have a problem with that because it one it deviates from the budget that the board has approved, um, and and isn't called into question, right? About okay, why did we have these vacancies? Why? Are we converting these salary savings into buying more trucks? The board didn't approve spending this on trucks. We did because it's part of the contract spend authority. Um, that's what we're padding. It's not the same as budget. I, I get that, that's perfectly clear, but it is effectively a line of credit and saying, hey, if you wanna spend 10 million on trucks instead of 1 million that's budgeted, go for it. And and I think that's where we need clarity. You know, The board needs to understand that when we approve that, it is different than budget because we're we're budgeting one million and we're saying, but if you really want to spend ten, go for it. If it's if you have the budget to do it, and that that funding can be taken from other areas if it's available, and that's what board members need to realize and the public needs to you know realize. We we I agree that we need greater transparency around this, and that's that's my concern is that disconnect, and currently. There is no other mechanism in the board's governance processes where we we can curb that or have a say in that. So I'll just leave it at that. We've we've hashed this out. Yeah, so that's you. a that's a good that's a good point. And and the only and the only thing I think you had mentioned about the bat, you know, the bat would be the thing there that would would allow us. To, you'd have the oversight there, but um, retroactive, right, Mr. Hartlove? That that it, would be after the nine, the additional nine million were purchased, that comes to us and says, "Hey, can you approve that we spent ten million instead of one million on trucks?" We we would bring the we would bring the BLTs to the to this committee. Um, so we would yeah, and it's something like that. I mean, uh, I, I I believe I don't want to speak out of turn. Mr. Tantliff can jump in here, but I I don't think we would procure trucks without having the budget in place first because we'd be fearful that you know if it was if it was a you know big change in plan that maybe you wouldn't approve it and we would be out on a on a on a uh, limb if we did something like that so we would I don't think we would we would do that because you could say no right and and I don't mean to <laughs> throw anybody yeah. the bus or truck here sticking with the truck and <laughs> <laughs> but but we do approve transfers um, after the fact, after the spending has has occurred. Is that correct? That um, is that is correct. I think when something like I do think there's some things we hold on though when we are uh, because we want to make sure you know there there are certain things that we spend and we have no con you know we don't have control over um, um, something like fuel. So if that goes over, then we're gonna we're gonna still continue to heat. The buildings and then we're going to come back and say hey we spent a lot more on heating fuel than we thought we were and we need to correct that things where we have a decision to make 
and we don't have to do it like in the truck analogy. We don't have to buy the trucks. We want to buy the trucks. So we would, I think we would hold on that until you approved it. But again, I, I don't want to speak out of turn. Is and I have one last question and I'll I'll turn it back to Mr. Manowski, but is there a reason the board could not approve the spend amounts um, annually as required rather than these large amounts? In other words, based on the anticipated annual expenditures. And I've asked this previously because sometimes we do get an approval for um, the estimated annual expenditures and then the following year we'll get the same contract back for an increase. And I'll ask, well, some some contracts we get um, and even though the contract terms are the same, it'll be for a multi year contract. Um, we'll get an, a request to approve an increase in expenditures and and the explanation will be, well, we didn't want to bring the board such a large amount. Um, and and I. If it if it were to align with the budget, I would appreciate that because it's it, there's alignment and that's what I think we're saying is that we'd rather see the objectives of that investment and for there to be tr greater transparency around that. Um, can you maybe speak to this and if I'm I'm venturing too far into. Buildings and contracts issues. Yeah, and I would say, you know, can I think we, we certainly can there, you know, that, that that's um, but I think it would be the things that I would put up, you know, raise a little bit of a yellow flag on would be, you know, does that impact? Pricing does that impact, you know, what uh, what if it's something kind of a longer term? Um, investment, you know, is is a company going to give us their best? If we're not fully 100% in, that doesn't mean we can't do it on other on contracts, uh, but it's just it's something we need to keep. I, I don't want to say yes, we're doing it without you know, without knowing what some you know some potential negative uh, ramifications. But there's no there's no reason we can't um, look at that, have that discussion. This is where it would be helpful to see the actual contract, and I know that we do include boilerplate that says if the appropriation is not available, then we have an escape right. clause that allows us out. And if that covers the board approval as um, one of the triggering events that qualifies us for that escape clause, that's that would cover us, I believe. Should the right. should the board not approve the increase? Um, in contract spend authority, that would be an escape clause. So it would be helpful to see the actual contract and to get advice from legal as to whether our lack of approval should we not approve a future in the event that we would not approve a future increase in contract spend authority that would at least give us the option of approving requested increases each year so that we have a closer alignment between expenditures um, requested and, and align that to the budget and amount to what's needed versus approving these larger amounts that that may be not necessary um, in any given year. I will take that to the um, to Ms. Harvey is um, you know as a as a discussion point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hartlove. Do you want to finish? This? I think I'm I think I'm I'm all done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thank you. Sorry for the firing squad there. No, no, uh, that's 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 uh that's okay. And hopefully, I mean, I think it, it seems like everybody has a good understanding of 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 the difference between the two. And I'm hearing a lot of messages about uh, the budget process, and that's and we certainly hear you. Yes, thank you very much. Um are we ready to move on to the next? Sure. OK, Mr. Hartlove, please provide an overview of the SY 2023-2024 proposed budget committee schedule. Oh, yes, I can I can pull up the. Um, the schedule, I think it was a it was a. Um, Ms. Over. Over put yeah. together a draft schedule, which I thought I had here. And now for some reason I can't I can't uh I might have it. Um 
I think it was just for the proposed meetings for our Wednesdays at 530 virtually still pretty good for everybody. And that I mean, that's the basic le legitimate of the schedule. I can get the full dates to everyone and, and we, we can. But is this time and, and, uh, and the day of the week good with all of our members here? Yes. Yes, with me, yes. Yes. Okay, there it is. Yeah, these are just suggested dates, but these are I think these follow similar to what we did in um, this current year. Looks good. Any questions? Moving on. OK, thank you very much. Um, the next Mr. Harlow, please provide an overview of House Bill 175 Baltimore County Board of Education student member voting and training. Um, this one, I just I know you're probably aware of it, um, and I just wanted to let you know that. Let's see if I can find it now. Um, so it 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 allows for uh, um, not allows, but it um, yeah it allows student to vote, and uh, beginning with the upcoming uh, budget year, and the um, within two months of the students. Uh, election th we have to provide training so i just wanted to let you know that that was going on that uh working with the budget the budget office is 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 um in the process of um well we've talked about coming up with some uh training for uh members which is which is mandatory um and just wanted you to be aware of that and uh and uh that it was going on and that we were we would we we're prepared to provide that training Thank you. Ms. Bookwicker Dyer, do you have a question? Yeah, so I think it's great that the um, students will have the opportunity to participate in the training and the legislation, I feel like, represents the floor. And so, in order to truly ensure that this training is, um, it meets the needs of our, of our young learner, how are you involving teachers um, in the development of the curriculum and even in the um, the delivery of the curriculum. So I'm thinking Baltimore County, they have wonderful career and technical education teachers that teach about budget and finance on a regular basis. So are we looking at, you know, giving those teachers stipends to include them in this process so that we are ensuring that whatever curriculum is developed or whatever training is developed, it meets the needs of a uh, um, high school learner? We certainly can do that. We had we really just started uh, discussing it, so we are not very far in. Um, and this one of the reasons we brought it to the the committee because we wanted to get that kind of input. So we will uh, we will take that advice and and try to make sure we involve career educators um, as part of the process. That would be helpful because you may not have to develop something from scratch. I know that there's a lot of. Uh, things that are already developed and it may just be a matter of putting in the Baltimore County numbers and some Baltimore, the Baltimore County way um, into curriculum that may already be established and working well within our career programs um, for, for our students. So I would just encourage you to, to look there um, first so that it, it saves some work for your team. It still meets the requirement of the, of the law, um, but it just may be, it may help your team out a little bit more. Good suggestion. Thank you. Uh, my only other follow up is, will we be um, made aware of this training process and will the budget committee be um, bringing on the student member to be in the budget committee because now they have this great responsibility to vote on the budget? And I think making that, um, I don't know, I don't want to say mandatory, but um, strongly suggested that the student member be on the budget committee um for that reason because they're only there for one year and it's um they need to understand more than just you know one training session what what's going into the budget right and i don't know that we we can like you said i don't know that we can mandate it but certainly can suggest it and uh, um, um that could be part of the training is is that uh is that we have a budget committee and um, there's a lot of discussions. It's a good place to ask questions and um, that you may not be able to ask at a board meeting um, because of time constraints. So yes, we can we can put that, make that part of the training. 
Thank you. Ms. Sand, did you have a follow up? I do a comment and possibly a motion. Um, I would recommend that this committee move to recommend to the policy review committee that we rec that we um, put into policy um, that the student member um, be a member of the budget committee given this legislation that's in place. Whether that be through a new policy or an existing policy, um, but that we ask staff to bring a recommendation to the policy committee. I'd second that. I'm sorry, who seconded it? Who seconded? Maggie Dominowski, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I just have a discussion on that point. I don't know if it should be mandato mandatory um, because I do want to give the student board member if there's another committee that they may be interested in. Um, I do want to give them that option. Um, and so I would just hate to make something mandatory for a student that may not be their interests. And so it could be strongly encouraged, but I just, I caution against making it mandatory. I, I think they go through the training and then they have the decision to, they can decide if they wanna join this committee or they may wanna join a different committee. Sure, may I speak to my motion, Ms. Domanowski? Yes, can I just, uh, can, I, can I, yes, go ahead. Thank you. So I I believe I I agree with Ms. Booker Dwyer um, in that I think the student members should be able to participate in any committee that they are interested in. That has been um, the way. It, it hasn't been a policy before, you know, since I've been on the board. But any committee that they are interested in, they're certainly welcome to participate. I don't think this precludes that at all. Um, but I think as a matter of ongoing professional development, there is so much to be gained. Um, so much I've learned from participating in this committee that we we all have that I think is part of ongoing professional development um, with regards to the budget that it would be important that they do belong to the committee and that it's um, continuous. They're they're learning about about the budget. Um, so with with this response with this right comes responsibility, and I would. I would prefer that we mandate their participation on the committee or at least strongly encourage it, but would look to staff to make a recommendation to um, the policy review committee and we can leave it open and see what staff bring to the committee and what the um, the policy committee brings back. So I can restate my motion, but um, if you like Ms. Domanowski, I think you had comments or maybe Mr. Yes. McGinn did. Yeah, I just um, I agree also with those sentiments. I don't I don't want to make it mandatory as opposed to take it away from something else. But this is something that is um, very important. It's a billion dollar budget that we're allowing, um, you know, a 17, 18 year old in on. And I think that they need to be as informed as possible when making decisions on that. And um, even, I mean, even when you're on a budget committee, you can't always make the meetings. So if they, they can't make every single one, they can't make every single one, but they need to make, they need to show that commitment to understanding how a budget works. I don't know that I knew how to um, balance my checkbook when I was a junior in high school. So, um, and I'm not saying that this student member is anything like me. I'm just saying that this is a very serious thing and a very, um, you know, great opportunity for our student member to make an impact. And I just want to give them all the tools to make the right decisions and be informed and be part of the conversation and be an advocate for what, you know, they want to put in that budget and how much. And I think this is a good place for them to start. We can put that before the before board members and discuss it. Um, but I just I, I agree with Ms. Hen that um, being in this conversation it's a good is a good place for that board member aside from just you know that one training that they're going to go through would you like me to restate my motion yes i'm sorry did you want to put it in the chat so um Ms. Sure. regina can can copy it sure i'll type it thank in. you mm -hmm. regina sorry 
<laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Are we okay to move on to the next? Well, I, I believe we need to to vote on. Oh, yeah. we need, oh I'm sorry. Yeah, we need right. to vote. I'll, sorry, I'll, yeah. I haven't done that yet. <laughs> okay. Um, I move that the committee ask the policy review committee to ask staff to bring a policy recommendation to the committee regarding student member participation on the budget committee. And do I have a second? Second, Dominowski. Uh, okay. And then we will vote um, in favor, opposed. In favor or opposed. Ms. Dominowski? Favor. Mr. McMillian? In favor. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Abstain. I'm sorry? I abstain. Okay. And Ms. Hatton? In favor. So that, that is three in favor, one that abstains. The motion which passed. is, right. I don't believe it's a, a quorum, correct? Yes, there's four yes. members. Yeah, okay. So, uh, Ms. Regino, it, it passed. It did, okay. <laughs> Yeah, just to make sure. Just want to make sure. I have clear. not done that either. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It passed. Yeah, we don't do too much voting on the budget committee. So right. Is, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for being patient with me. Oh, you're fine. You're great. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So next, Mr. Hartlove and Mr. Tantlove, please provide information for discussion regarding the FY 2025 budget. Sure. And uh, this is kind of we, we we I think we talked quite a bit about this already i kind of added this i didn't get a chance to talk to ms dominowski so i sorry i i didn't talk to you first i just threw this on here because i knew i had you know i'd heard various board members talk about um at, at various times in in our in board meetings about the budget process and improvements to the budget process and i put this one here just as a quick starting to throw out ideas not any we don't have to resolve anything just and and I, i'm hearing transparency um um is a is a big one um what else uh, uh you know improve transparency any any other things that we can start to kind of and any specific ideas because um you know we want to we we're really trying to improve the process and 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 move it to something more um user friendly and um, useful to the to board members in the community. So no, like I said, no, this is really just kind of a brainstorming and we we've heard a lot already, so we don't necessarily need to. Um, and Mr. Tantliff, if I don't know if you want to, he's uh, brought up a uh, prior year uh, dates, kind of the big dates, and I don't know if their dates are any any part of anybody's um, thought process. We're not, you know, again, we're not making any decisions here. We're just kind of having a discussion, but anything you want to add, uh, Mr. Tantliff? You want me to walk through the process real quick? That'd be um, great. So uh, either, uh, now so I'll just say some functions like CNI might start internally to work their process and facilities uh, before we kick off. But basically in September, uh, my supervisor Kelly Wynn and I uh, will uh, make a couple of appearances where uh, budget managers, so everyone who will be submitting a budget or designing a budget, not necessarily the person who's keying in the budget, 
Um, we'll have a couple of kickoff meetings, just kind of go high level, do a quick review <clears throat> of the performance budgeting system, uh, answer questions if uh, the superintendent or board have given uh, guidance that early, we'll, we'll give that to them. And then we open up our performance budgeting system uh, where they put in their budget. So as a starting point, they're normally given a baseline target for their discretionary money that's uh, flat to the prior year's budget. They're given um, a reference points of this year's spend uh, or the, the two prior years spend and uh, they're given a target, then things like built in, which is like our contract inflation items. Uh, that'll be submitted on a separate tab with justification and a lot of detail. Um, but they so we have work sessions where they can come and see detailed hands on in the budget. Um, they can work their budget right there, ask questions. They don't have to go to that if they're comfortable and what to do. And they usually have about two weeks to get their budget in. And then a week after that, uh, the same process will conclude for grants. Um, if the area advisory councils are hosting public budget meetings, uh, we'll try to attend those and see if there's any uh, feedback that's uh, relevant and of interest. Uh, then the chiefs will be receiving their roll up. We'll get everything pulled together for them. Uh, they'll do pre-reviews, then they'll uh, meet with the budget office and Mr. Hartlove if he's available. And we'll have some back and forth to understand what they're submitting and help the chiefs prioritize what they want to submit to the superintendent. Um, and then in November, we'll have several meetings, mostly with the chiefs, superintendent, uh, budget office, some other uh, folks. Um, help him or her, un, now it'll be a her, understand what's in the budget, what they're considering. Um, if we have feedback from the county on how much they can fund, uh, you know, above maintenance of effort, which is normally a hard number to get, uh, we'll work with that. And we'll be also at, in kind of a dynamic fashion, almost weekly, we'll be trying to project what the state budget funding will look like. <clears throat> and of course, that's been a little more volatile now that blueprints uh, rolling out and some of the metrics, like how are they measuring free and reduced for compensatory ed? If you remember, it was a big change this year that actually uh, worked out to our favor. But so we'll be trying to match up uh, what's been requested versus what uh, is funded. And then the superintendent will present the budget to the board in G early January. Uh, the board, as they wish, can have as many work sessions as they want. Uh, by statute, we need to send the budget to the county by March 1st. So the board this year voted on the very last day of February. It's just how the board meetings went. I don't think we ever uh, did a vote that late, but uh, that's what happened. Then we'll have a lot of back and forth with the county executive once he receives the superintendent's proposed budget. Their finance or budget office will be asking us a lot of questions so the county executive understands what's being asked of him. Um, he, he may, um, you know, there could be, there's lots of back and forth, lots of pushback. And, and one thing I didn't mention is not on here, the board, uh, submits lots of questions and it varies by year how uh, in depth and how voluminous they are. Um, but the board also submits multiple waves of questions after the superintendent proposes uh, his budget and we get those answered and posted as uh, quickly as we reasonably can. The county executive, meanwhile, is looking at not only the schools, but all his other offices and trying to prioritize with the money he has available what he chooses to fund. Uh, he proposes it and then the county council votes on that a month later. Generally, uh, they leave intact both for us and the other agencies what the county executive proposes. But for instance, this year, the county council cut 
$500,000 out of our budget when they voted last week. Um, and the only other time they've really done that was when COVID first hit and the financial situation was very uncertain. So they were doing last minute trimming uh, just because they didn't know how much how much revenue would be impacted the next year. Um, and so right now, since the county council gave us the adopted budget, uh, we're now pulling together the final adopted budget. Board members will get another budget book similar to the ones you've had, the third one. So you get a, there's a superintendent's proposed, the board proposed, and then the final um, adopted budget will be issued uh, normally at the first meeting in July, and the budget goes live on July 1st. So that's, you know, kind of at a high level, all the, the key dates in the current budget process. And, you know, be happy to answer any questions or any feedback or like Mr. Hartlove said, we're just kind of in a gathering phase here. Ms. Booker, do you have a question? Yes, so in the budget cycle, I, I'm wondering at what point is there like a comprehensive review of the strategic plan? Because that plan should drive the budget. And so if we're meeting with managers in September, I almost want to see what's happening before then to set us all up for getting to the September where people are prioritizing and, and thinking about what they um, their, their budget cycle. So is that built in at all? Well, um, you know, I would say right now, if you think about our strategic plan that's out there, it's kind of a multi-year plan with certain goals. So uh, when the offices are submitting their budget, they're trying to align with that. Now things are morphing pretty rapidly now because of Blueprint and that's essentially becoming the strategic plan for everyone around the state to try to comply with the legislation. But uh, wherever possible, the superintendent is providing that guidance. Any strategic plan um, of any sort is approved by the board. So the budget uh, is always trying to align with those planks. And you can see that in the budget book. We try to align everything with the goals of the strategic plan. Right, but then there's progress that's made on the on the on the goals within the strategic plan. And so we can determine whether or not the amount, the right amount has been allocated in the budget based off of what's the progress that has been made thus far. So maybe you need to put more budget, you may, maybe you need a larger allocation of the budget to a specific goal as opposed to another goal that may have been met or almost is met. So I would like to see somewhere that clear connection to the strategic plan driving the budget process and these budget cycle dates. And another question I have is around the special revenue grant, that October 7th date. So this is grant. So this is like Title I, Title II, are these federal yeah. grants? Yeah. Yes. So those applications are typically due well before October 7th, right? So they're typically, I'm thinking of, you know, like if we're thinking about like the Perkins grant, for instance, that's typically due like in May. So how yeah. you're just, off but you're off by you're yeah. off by a year by yeah we're it's wait because it's the yeah. following year so it's a, that's good that's a good point to to make so that's what i wanted to um clarify so they've planned for it for that so the budget for october 7th is for the not the current year yeah, but for you, that you you got it got it perfect perfect uh and something to keep in mind too with special revenue uh, now things, well, Title I's a good example. The amounts um, have risen pretty significantly the last couple of years. So when we're uh, pulling the budget together, they're often, um, even if it's a recurring grant, like the IDA pass-through for special ed, Title I, you know, our historic two largest uh, grants, um, they do the best they can in estimating uh, what the amounts will be, but in the end, the final 
budget that goes in the system matches what the award is. So there's a little more flexibility in special revenue than the general fund where we spend no, we can't spend, you know, a penny more than what the general fund budget is. Okay, so those are all my questions. I just really sure. would love to see that strategic plan driving uh, this cycle and just that setting up for that data analysis even prior to uh, these budget discussions so that everything can be in tight alignment and the money is being used to move student achievement. Sure. Thank you for thank you for the feedback and uh, and we are taking notes and um anything else in interest because we still have one more item on our agenda so yeah, I was to say um, thank you for all that information, Mr. Hutlow and Mr. Tanleff. Is there, if there are no further questions on this one, we can move on to the next. We okay, good? And I, I can bring that one up as well, Ms. Dominowski. Okay. Thank you. This is on the standard operating procedure for budget management. Yes. So I think this is your item, Ms. Dominowski. This is this is, but this is, I believe, the back the background on it. Yes, and I'm going to need some assistance on this because I was not here when this started. I think um, it was uh, Mr. Kuhn who put this word. I don't know, if Ms. Hen or Mr. McMillian have any input on this one? Not me that I remember. And and now we've we you know we've gone from the big picture now we're down to a very small picture here. This is just your actual board of education budget, not the whole board. <laughs> I'm saying it the wrong way, but just <laughs> just the op, just the the budget for the operations of the board of education. So it's you know not a not a big part of our budget, a very important part of our budget, but not a not a big piece of our budget here. I'm just I mean, not familiar with it because I don't. Um, I I wasn't. I should have. Yeah, Miss Miss Hen. Thank you. Um, I have a question that's more in general related to this, and I I am familiar with with this and how it came to be. Um, the the background of it. Um, it pertains just to the office of the Board of Education and the standard um, operating protocol that was put in place in response to the OIGE report. Um, this was one of the, the action items we had was to put an SOP in place. Um, but my question has to do with um, the other offices and whether an SOP exists for that for their offices, how closely it um, aligns with ours. One does such an SOP exist for the others um, and can we review theirs? And and is that something that we we can review? Ms. Hender, each each every office follows the same procedures. They follow the calendar. Uh, we just said so. There's some SOPs around. Uh, we'll have to dig them up, but there's guidance and SOPs and you know just things around the budget in general apply to all offices equally. There's no unique office SOPs for any one office. But I guess when so when Mrs. Causey was actually chair when um, this was being put together and she had asked for the SOPs for the other offices because we wanted to see what it had existed, we weren't able to get copies to review. And we were told at that time that they were being developed. So have they been finalized and where can the board access them or can we be given access to review them? Uh, I, an SOP, I don't know off the top of my head. We'll have to see if one has been previously developed. But again, there would be one for BCPS. Each office would not have their own SOP on developing a budget. It would just be the overall budget process. So the document that we're looking, I want to make sure I'm being clear, the document that we're looking at, this SOP for the Office of the Board of Ed. 
what I'd like to see is this document for the other offices. If they use the same one and it's identical, then that's fine. We'll just have one document to review. If they have their own particulars, you know, because this is so detailed, I would imagine others would have their unique, you know, division of responsibilities, for instance, that that may not look the same for each office. Where do those exist and where can can the board see those? Is that something that internal audit looks at? Do they verify that they they exist? And, and it's a box that gets checked to say, yes, an SOP exists for these other offices. It's not I, just for the board of, for the office of the board of A. What we can do, Ms. Hen, is we can um, we can do our, our our homework here, go back and see what we have, and um, and bring that to a future meeting. And with this with this same, so we because I think the the action tonight was either to vote for this or to vote it down. But we could also, I guess, you could we could delay it to a future meeting when you have more information. Thank you. That that would be my preference because what we wanted to see was, you know, this is kind of an island as far as I'm concerned in terms of I want to see what others are doing. And and until we have that information, I think we should um, delay the vote on this. I think I you were required. You got you guys were required to develop this because of those audit issues that came up. Just an FYI, not disagreeing with any any. Yeah. If point we were about required, digging up all the other ones. Exactly. If we were required, were other were other offices required as well? And why wouldn't we be able to see theirs? Well, well, you could see theirs if there existed, but I I don't believe. I'm not saying there couldn't be some office that d does their own out there. I don't think there are. I'm simply stating this was developed because of an audit finding on the board, and one of the recommendations was to develop this SOP. I'm, I'm, that's what, how this particular document, why it was developed. I just, was it because it was of the audit, specific, are all offices, was it just the Board of Education? Yes, that was, uh, yes the board had, an, had, a, had a significant audit finding, and this was one of the responses that the board developed to, it, it, was, re, it was a recommendation of the audit findings. So it was a recommendation on a requirement. I don't remember off the top of my head. Do you remember, Ms. Hen? It it was a recommendation. I, I don't recall the particulars. It was a recommendation mm -hmm. of either audit or the, the OIGE, but um, we were told at the time that the other offices were in the process of developing theirs. So I would like to see theirs. We'll see what's out there, as you know, as Mr. Hartlove mentioned, we'll see what may be available or, you know, maybe there's some things that need to be developed. Right. And we can also pull that audit and see if it's a, a recommendation or if it's uh, something more than that, because it's certainly, you know, if it's a recommendation, then you have decisions to make. Um, I mean, you have decisions to make either way, but, you know, it, Correct. If it's only a recommendation, then you don't necessarily have to do it. Mr. McMillian, do you have something to say? I'm curious. I've got something to say at the end of this. <laughs> OK. That's it. Go ahead. Well, if, if everybody finished on this topic. I think so. I guess. Oh, Let's so, go. wait, Let's this, go. I think Booker Dreyer has a question. Yeah, having more background information so that we could be better guided on um, having a sound um, SOP would be very helpful. I do think it's it's a good practice to have one, um, but I want to make sure that ours is in alignment with effective practices. Got it. And, and the only other comment I would add would be that um, some of the findings I recall applied to other groups as well. So I believe that any recommendations for um, the Office of the Board of Ed would have applied to the same to the other offices that had the same finding, whether those would be internal audit findings or external audit findings, because the same findings appeared on um, recurrent and multiple 
year's external audits as well. So I believe, as memory is coming back to me, that that was the impetus for the um, development of these SOPs for other offices, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you, good, Mr. McMillian. You ready? Yep. Uh, approximately a week and a half ago, I submitted some questions about turf and and where that money was coming from. Is is did that not make the agenda? I yeah, and what I did, I did email you today. That was I, I tried to, um, but we can talk about it if you want. If you want to talk about it, certainly. Um, I did try to uh, respond. Uh, to your email. I did. I, I saw your email. I didn't get a chance to read the full email, um, but I I did ask to put that one on this agenda for today. And I yeah, OK, that's that's my fault, but we certainly can. We can discuss it now. Yeah, I didn't see the email. Go ahead, please. Um, yeah, my understanding is you, you said there was some confusion um, it, and you were correct. It's not it's not for inspection. Um, it is you're you're talking about the uh, you had said the ads um, were thinking that it was um, it was it was for things that they want to do for turf projects and that is the case they are correct um, it it could be used to install turf fields that's if the funding is available we'd have to have funding for that but certainly um, it's it's my understanding is it's for um, Drainage systems, seeding, sodding, top dressing, air, air, aer aeration, watering, fertilizing. It's for all the things that athletic directors tend to need to do to their facility, their fields and facilities. OK, the way that state includes the design and insta installation services for outdoor and indoor turf fields. Now that seems to me that 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 sounds like artificial turf to me. It it, it does, but you don't see artificial. <laughs> you don't you don't water artificial. So it is very it is there is a confusion. I think it does multiple things, and this was a county um, uh, sure. solicitation. We just piggyback this county solicitation, so this is not our solicitation. So was that six million dollars or whatever it is? And I don't have that contract in front of me. Was was that in our budget? I don't believe so. No, I, I, I don't. So where did I, it come? I, so the county, did the county gave us that money? I did, the history of the budget part of this, I don't know. I know there was something about uh, you had mentioned that uh, there was some work being done on some turf funding, but I don't know anything about that. We can we can try to look that up. My I was just but, responding to the to the actual uh, bid. <laughs> It just it's a really cloudy area where this money comes from. Like right now, the state and I've tried to get Tony Bazemore on, on this, but I sent it to the wrong email address. I wanted to hear what he had to say on it, too. The state like said no for whatever reason. For, uh, a lot of times in the past, the state would come up with half the money and Baltimore County would come up with half the money, whether it was recreation and parks or whatever. So now the state says, you know, said no. And, and then just recently here a couple of days ago, the county says no. But then this money's sitting there, you know, and, you know, it certainly appears that, you know, where did this money come from? If that money's sitting there, why can't we spend that money for turf? Or, right. And what's going to happen to it now that contract came through? And I know I get excited and people, you know, I am me and that's what it is. I, I, yeah, that's me. But so that money came through that contract and we approved that contract. Now what happens? Well, like we were just talking before, that contract just allows us to go to these vendors that are in the contract. Doesn't necessarily mean we have the money to do it. But didn't you say too that that's usually not the the order of the process? You, you're right. We would normally not uh, go out and bid something if we didn't have dollars to do it. We did piggyback, not knowing the history of what what drove all this. I don't know, but. Right now, I don't know what funding is or is not in place. I can do that. I can do that homework. I just was covering you. You would ask, what does this particular contract cover? And I was giving you what it covers. Whether we have money to do the things that it covers or not, I don't know. But it covers a lot of different things, as you as you see from the you know from what I was yeah. saying. 
it covers and interestingly it, it, in the second paragraph just said work categories identified include grading installation of artificial turf surfaces including grading sensors and all so it just you know it just adds to the mud yes the, you know the whole process thank you for putting up with me thank you I mean, I just want to piggyback on that a little bit. Why do we approve a contract if we don't have the funding to do it? Uh, yeah, and, and I'm speaking a little bit out of turn here because I don't. I'd have to do the history. What I when I was emailing, I was just emailing on the particular contract. I can find out. And now that we brought this up, I'm going to do a little bit more homework and see if I can find out what is there funding available? Is there not funding available? What happened? What's the history of this? And why did? Why did this go to buildings and contracts if there maybe it was it was um, anticipating that we were going to get funding and then the funding fell through? I don't I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Did anyone have any else questions about this one? I never received any information about this. Did I miss an email? You you it's my I dropped the ball. Ms. Dominowski asked me to put it on the agenda and I did not. So there was no doc. It was just an email uh, that I sent Mr. Uh, McMillian. I can forward it to you. Um, the next uh, item I wanted to talk about was our next. This was supposed to take place of our June meeting because we all have a lot of things going on in June. But just tonight talking so much, I know there's a lot of things that weren't finished. So do we want to have a meeting in June? And what are some Wednesdays that I mean, this is virtual, so I will be um, I will be out of town the last week of June, but I can still do virtual anytime. Uh, Wednesdays at 530 work for me. Um, are there any dates in June or is there a feeling that we need to skip June and go to July? What I, I want to hear everybody's thoughts. The 28th doesn't work for me, but I can do any other date and Wednesdays are are good for me if the 21st works for everyone. And I would I'm just, available if people want to do it. And I would just throw out that the 25th, 21st was the date that was scheduled for the original meeting. So that's blocked and everything. So in that way, it's good. Is it? Does that work for everyone? Any objections? Speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> OK, so let's keep that on June 21st. And thank you for um, and letting me add this extra meeting in. I think we got a lot of good information and I appreciate Mr. Tantloff and Mr. Hartlove for all of their hard work and all their answer answers that they gave us tonight. Um, if there's no further comments or questions. I, I have not. I have to look at my reading. How do I end this? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, out. Um, that's it. Um, Hearing none, this uh, the meeting is now adjourned. And thank you all. Have a great night. And um, that's it. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the weather. <laughs> yes.